we're going to talk about another entity in electrostatics called a capacitor. A capacitor is a storage device. It stores energy in the form of electrostatic energy. We imagine the most simple capacitor consisting of two point charges. Because there are two of them, there is an electric field and a voltage between them. And the concept of, of a capacitor is this object that stores voltage or potential energy in proportion to the magnitude of the two charges. So if plus Q is on one side of the capacitor and minus Q is on the other side of the capacitor, then we speak of the Q on one of the plates being related to the voltage stored through a constant proportionality called C. C is called the capacitance of this system. It represents the amount of voltage you will get for that amount of charge that you've stored in the capacitor, or actually C represents the amount of charge necessary to get a certain voltage V. The units for capacitance is called a farad, after Michael Faraday. In the MKS unit, one farad is one coulomb divided by one volt. Our parameter called epsilon naught that we introduced in electrostatics previously in the units of farads may be expressed as 8.85 picofarads per meter, where pico is 10 to the minus 12. You may approximately say that that is 9 picofarads per meter, and that's a more convenient number to remember in many cases. It is common to have to co compute value for capacitance for various systems. This comes from putting a charge Q on one of the plates and a charge minus Q on the other plate of a system and then integrating and calculating the voltage difference between them. The capacitance will always be the constant of proportionality between Q and the voltage. In this class, I will simply ask you to remember a few expressions for capacitance for a particular kinds of capacitor. For two infinitely large sheets, or semi-approximately infinitely large sheets, each of area A, and separated by a distance D, the capacitance is equal to this parameter epsilon sub zero times the area divided by the distance. In other words, the larger the area, surface area of the plates, the larger the capacitance, and the, lar the larger the distance between the plates, the smaller the capacitance. Because Q is equal to C times V, when capacitance gets large, it takes, a larger, it takes a larger amount of charge to obtain a similar voltage difference across the two plates as it does when C is smaller. Another system where it's helpful to know the capacitance is two concentric cylinders. If the inner cylinder is of radius A, and the outer cylinder is of radius B, and the length of these cylinders is L, capital L. The capacitance of this system is equal to 2 pi times epsilon sub zero times the ratio L over the natural logarithm of B over A. It's not important to derive this equation, it's important to be able to use it. What makes capacitance large here is when either the length of these cylinders is larger or the ratio of B over A is smaller. In other words, the plates become closer together. That's much like the case of the two parallel plates. The capacitance gets larger when the plate separation becomes small. The last case I'll ask you to remember is that of two concentric spheres. If I have two concentric spheres, each, oh, if the inner one is radius A and the outer one is radius B, the capacitance of this system is 4 pi epsilon sub zero times the ratio of AB over B minus A. As an example, let's consider what is the capacitance of planet Earth. Planet Earth is like a sphere, and we can imagine another sphere located at the other end of the universe. In other words, we have a pair of concentric spheres. The inner, the inner one has the Earth's radius, the outer one is infinitely far away. So in our expression for capacitance for two concentric spheres, we'll let the parameter b go to infinity. Recalling that formula, it's 
4 pi is epsilon sub 0 times this ratio AB over B minus A. If B is infinitely large, then the minus A in the denominator can be neglected. And I have, as a result, 4 pi epsilon sub 0 times A times, uh, a times infinity over infinity minus A, which approximately reduces to 4 pi epsilon naught times A. In the MKS units, we must find out what the radius of the Earth is. And you can consult any, any text and find that the radius of the Earth is approximately 6,400 kilometers. But we must insert 6.4 times 10 to the 6 meters. Then we convert to meters. As a result, the capacitance of the Earth can be found to be 700 microfarads, so far less than one farad. Even something as large as the Earth does not necessarily have a large capacitance. So imagine how large a farad is. If someone were to hand you a one farad capacitor, it would have to be a very unusual object indeed. Another formula that's absolutely essential for, to, for you to know is the potential energy stored in a capacitor. There are two equivalent expressions. You can remember that the potential energy U is 1 half times C times V squared, or it is 1 half times Q squared over C. To get the second expression, one simply remembers that V is equal to Q over C for a capacitor. And which of these two formulas will be most helpful to you will depend upon whether or not you know the voltage or the, or the charge stored in a capacitor for a particular problem.